Hi, everybody. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'll warn everybody, this is my first time. And so not only am I nervous, um, I'm figuring it out. So we'll work. Um, my name is Callie Alvarado and I am Sweet Sugar Bell. I'm the person behind all the cookie cutters and products that you see. Um, we just released a new line in Michael's stores and it's a lot of fun stuff. And since it's almost back to school, I decided that we should make some back to school cookies today. And I always tell people that we make them as gifts for the teacher, but it's really actually a bribe because I know what my kids are gonna do before they do it. So these are like back to school bribes. Okay, we've got three different cookies that I'm gonna demonstrate today. I'm gonna start with a simple notebook paper cookie. And fun fact, this was one of the first cookies that I made and one of my favorite to make because people just love it. It's so simple but people really enjoy. It's just cute and fun. Then we're going to move on to a pencil and then we'll finish up with an apple. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about was that um, our class list for these cutters was a little bit larger than some class list, but that's because you can make one cookie or you can make a lot of cookies and they go together good as a group, but they package well as single cookies or as a platter like this. But anyway, I wanted to show you three different options. Don't feel like you have to make all three. You can make one or you can make all three. And you can also improvise with stuff that you have. Um, I think that's my biggest priority whenever um, I make these products and teach people to decorate cookies. Um, I want to give you products that give you as little or as much help as you need as you learn to decorate. And so the products are designed that whenever you're a beginner, um, it really holds your hands and lets you know exactly what to do. But they're versatile enough that as you grow and develop your own style, you can totally like change it into something that's uniquely you. But anyway, I can talk forever. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to start again with the notebook paper cookie. Um, I'll show you what it looks like again. This is the simplest and I'm starting with this one because it has the basic techniques you need for cookie decorating. And um, some of the basic techniques you can have a class on in itself. So if we have any questions and it's about something that I'm working on right now, go ahead and ask me the question and then um, if it's something like off in left field, um, let's wait till the end to ask those. That way um, we can keep on moving and get to the fun part. But if you see something then in there, um, go ahead and let us know what the question is and um, we'll answer it as I'm working and if I, if I can, and if not, we'll get the information to you after the class. Okay, let's start with the notebook paper. Okay, we're starting with the plain rectangular cookie and this is the nested cutter set from Michaels. Should be landing in your stores about now. And the first thing we're gonna do is outlining and filling. I'm using two different consistencies of royal icing. I call them outline and flood consistency. And let me not talk so much and get to work so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I do is I have it in a piping bag with a little bag tie and a number two tip. And the number two tip is a good outline size because it builds up enough of a dam to keep the icing in. So whenever you're piping on cookies, the first thing that you need to remember is you do not want to drag the tip across the cookie. You need to lift up and away. And whenever you come to a corner or a junction of any type, then you touch down and then you keep on going. But you see how I'm lifting like up and away from the cookie? You also need to maintain constant pressure on the piping bag so that it, um, so that there aren't breaks in your icing. So I actually should have told you this before we started. Before you start piping, you should usually practice 
on a little plate or something to make sure that there's no clogs in your tip. But practicing also gives you kind of a feel for what the icing is going to do. So you make a dot, you pull up and away, and whenever you're ready to stop or turn, touch. And demonstrating white on white was not very helpful. That was kind of an afterthought. But anyway, I wanted to throw that in there. Okay, so once the cookie is outlined, you need to let the outline set up a little bit because if you don't, the weight of the flood icing can actually kind of flow over the side and break the little dam or barrier. And the way that I usually um, explain this is that it is a dam. So the flood icing is very liquid, it's like water. And then um, the piping icing is a little dam to hold everything in. I like being able to watch y'all as I work. This is fun, I see little people. Okay, so once the outline is dry, most of the time I wait like two to three, maybe even four minutes to do that. Um, then you go ahead and flood it with flood icing. Flood icing is a more liquid consistency. It's almost like honey. And if anybody has questions about that, I have a, a pretty in-depth post on my website and we've got some links for that that we can send you to. But the flood icing is liquid. We usually use bottles to flood with. And the way that it works, I'm trying to keep my head out where y'all can see things, is I start by going around the edges and see how that little dam kind of keeps the icing in. And then I come back and fill up. This is also how I make sure that I don't overfill. If you kind of fill it in like this, it's almost like coloring on a coloring page, except that it flows a little bit. If you leave those little holes, you see where I've kind of left them, it gives you a little bit of room for everything to flow together. If you completely fill things up, there is a small chance that you might um, overflow things. And so it's um, important not to overfill. Okay, once you're to this flooding part, the next step is to kind of smooth it out. I like to do this with an offset spatula, but there's different tools for different people. Some people like to use a needle tool, which we actually have in the Michaels collection now. But you kind of got to figure out what works for you. Um, the most important thing about this is that you kind of watch it and it, it may be a little bit hard to see from this angle, but I like to look from the side and see if there are any divots. And what you're looking for is a flush surface so that whenever it dries, it dries flat and it's smooth and even. So this is kind of your foundation. And I actually expect to get some pictures here, but I'll have to, I mean, not pictures, uh, questions here. Um, once, once a royal icing cookie, or royal icing cookies actually need dry time. So if they don't have any dry time in between, you can't actually work ahead. And I like to warn people about that before they even start because um, you do need built-in drying time. And so to account for that, we actually have some stuff that are already pre-dried over here so that you can see it in like quick motion. So if we were doing this in real time, once you've completed this step, this needs to dry at least four to eight hours, depending on where you live. Because if it's not dry, you can't um, mark on it and do other things, and it's more likely to bleed. So your first step in decorating the notebook paper cookies would be to outline and flood, and then set it aside to dry. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here we are. We did like the magic for TV version. We've got like one that's already dry that I brought with me. Um, another thing that I wanna point out, a lot of people worry about uh, spreading or the shape of their cookies. 
Um, I want you to look really closely at this because people always say my cookies are perfect, but this rectangle is a little bit wonky. And I really like people to remember that cookies are kind of like teenagers. They have that awkward stage. And so you have to like stop, not look at it here and keep going and let it finish growing and developing before you decide it's a bad cookie. But um, don't get too hung up on perfection because I like like clean, nice looking cookies. But if you get too involved with that, it kind of loses its charm. So we want it to look hand decorated. But the point of that is, is if it's a little bit off shape or it spread, that's okay too, because it'll be fine in the end. They're really cute, they look good, and people will be happy. Okay, so for the next step of the notebook paper, we've outlined and flooded the cookie. We're going to um, use food color markers in red and blue to actually draw the lines on the cookie to make notebook paper. Um, the thing that you need to know is you need to have a straight edge and I usually use a clear flexible ruler and Michael's actually has those. I found a link for that and um, included it in my notes, but you can get a clear flexible ruler, which is kind of cool because it helps you like position things as you work your way down the cookie. But if you don't have one, you can use any ruler like this one that I have, or you can actually use the straight edge of the cookie cutter if you're really in a bind, I just like the more flexible rulers or a piece of paper because it lays flush with the cookie in case you have a little bit of curve. So let's add these lines. I know I'm coming at you know, with a lot of information. The decorating is the fun part to watch, but I feel like it's really important for your success. And like I said, I have a website with a lot of these things explained really in depth that you can go to. So if I miss something or you need something more, you can um, you can look there as well. Um, whenever you do notebook paper cookies, you have to start with the red because um, if you draw the blue through the red, it doesn't really show and get muddy. But if you um, do it the other way around and draw the blue lines first and trace the red through, it kind of bleeds into a big purpley mess and you don't want that. So. See if I can make this, you can see right, okay. Um, I'm just using a plain red food color marker. You can get these lots of places. These actually came from Michael's. And I use the straight edge to draw a little red line on there. And it is as easy as that. The hardest part is not shaking because I'm a shaky person, but Super cute, easy, a great beginner cookie. Once you do that, I will recommend that you rub the side of the ruler off, like clean it to make sure there's like you can. Can you actually see where I got some red on there? Right here. I don't know if it should. You see that little bit of red residue on there? That's why we wipe the ruler in between lines. Do you see it right there? Okay. So anyway. On to the next one. We're gonna do the same thing that we just did and we're going to work down with the blue food color marker. So get it positioned, line up and then, whoops, don't leave your finger there. That's actually good whenever you make mistakes. Okay, sometimes this happens and I'm glad that I did that because that is a good thing for you to be aware of. Like be aware of your finger and where it is on the ruler. But if that happens, no biggie, you can cover it up. You can pipe a A plus on there and so you have a good grade to cover up your little mess or you can just let it go because probably nobody cares but you. Okay, so let's try this again. We're gonna work our way down the cookie and I actually brought a spare if you wanna see it twice but line it up again make sure my finger is not in the way and i'm just kind of eyeballing this and then using you can actually see the marker the blue marker a lot better Ta -da. so you can see why we wipe it in between but let's keep working down And I think after uh, I finish making my lines down this cookie, 
I'll line them all up where you can see. Like I said, I'm just eyeballing it here. If you're really worried about spacing, you can lay this on top of an actual piece of notebook paper and use the lines underneath as a guide to help you line up the ruler. It just depends on how precise you want to be. So Callie, we do have a question here about the about the red line. Would you say it's half an inch? Um, away from the side? Yeah. Yeah, approximately. Um, maybe a little bit more than half an inch, but I would just kind of eyeball it. it. You know, just kind of where it looks like a piece of paper. And I know people don't love that. That's actually like kind of the opposite of why my products are designed the way they are. But yeah, it's about, actually I have a ruler, I could tell you. It's closer to like five eighths, but. Perfect, thank you. Um, something else cool that like, you can consider, um, you don't have to be super literal either. So suppose um, you're using the ADP box set, which is new to Michael's, um, and that it's the one that the apple comes from. You can pull the heart out of that set and make your notebook paper in the shape of a heart. So there are a lot of fun things you can do. And there's other sets that um, you may own that you see, I did it again with my finger that you can also um, use cutters from. So there's a stacking set that just got to Michael's and I think it has a, a, a different rectangle in there for another design. But if you happen to have that set and you don't have any of the other ones, you can still make this cookie. So here is the notebook paper cookie, warts and all. Let's see if I can show it to you. And I do want to point out, like, if we start looking really hard, it's not perfect, but it it looks perfect from afar. And like I said, if you do something like I did there, you can just pipe something cute on it. You can put a flower. You can put a smiley face like a sticker. Don't get discouraged if you make something that you don't feel like is perfect because it really is perfectly cute and awesome. So we've got the notebook paper. And now um, I, I kind of said that uh, I wanted to do questions at the end, but I am wondering if anybody would like to see it again. I have a second one that I can go through again if anybody feels like they want to see it twice or um, if we want to go ahead and move on to the next one, which is the pencil. Um, just Does anybody get any questions? Emma says moving on is good. I okay, gotcha but pencil, yeah, everybody says to move on. And honestly, um, I, I, I didn't realize I could see the comments, but that's helpful. Um, I noticed that um, somebody said that um, I'm glad that you're not showing perfection. And I do want to make that clear. Like whenever I take pictures for Instagram, like I like to put the prettiest ones on top, but there are cookies on the bottom. And those are the ones that aren't the best of the best. Even whenever I organize this plate, like I put the three prettiest ones on top but it is okay. Like we're not going for perfection because um, in my opinion, decorated cookies are meant to eat. So we want them to be delightful and cute, but not so much that, so much stress that you, that you miss out on the joy and the fun. Okay, so moving along. The second cookie we're going to make is with a pencil cutter. Let me see here. And this is from the Shapeshifters two, or no, Shapeshifters one set, which is in Michael's now. Um, fun fact, Michael's is actually the first store where my Shapeshifters one set was sold. This is the same set, but we are calling it new and improved because over the years, as I've learned and um, my style has kind of changed, um, we, I wanted to change sizing and a few things. And so this pack of shapeshifters actually has a few updated designs and the cutters are a little bit smaller. So if you have the original shapeshifter set, it's not a bad idea to have these as well because they're smaller and a little bit updated. 
And so it's pretty fun, like if you don't like the big cookie, but um, I'm super, I love this set. And something else that I'll explain as I work, so you don't just have to listen to me talk. Um, the shape shifters, we call them that because every cutter is designed to be more than one thing. That way you get a lot of value, like you get a lot of bang for your buck and you can buy one set and do a lot of things. Um, the shape shifter set always also comes with these cool templates and they actually do the work for you. You don't have to use them, but if you're unsure or a new decorator, this is how they work. So you take the template and lay it on top of the cookie, and then you use a food safe marker and you trace the design on the cookie before you even start. And that way you have guidelines. It's more like a coloring page versus having to pick it or design it yourself because that's actually probably the most intimidating thing about cookie decorating. Um, the design part is um, like a blank cookie is intimidating if you don't know what to do. So um, even if I don't include templates and packaging on my blog, I often just go ahead and um, make printable templates, which we'll use in a minute, just to give people a guide if they feel like they need it. Okay, so I used a food color marker to draw the outline on the cookie, and now you know what you're working with. And another cool update about the new shapeshifter set, try to hold it where you can see it, um, is our original templates were white, and these are actually clear, and the clear helps with positioning on the cookie too. That way, if your cookie is spreads a little bit, then you can just move it to account for the spread, because if we're looking at my cookie, um, it's a little bit bigger than the cutter and the template, but I was able to move the template around to account for that. Okay, so step one, we've got the outline drawn on the cookie. The next step is going to be to outline and flood the yellow portion of the pencil. And this cookie, I started with it second because it's more complex. There's several steps. And like I mentioned before, this is um, kind of the, the part that takes people a little time to get used to whenever it comes to cookie decorating. There's drying times between these steps. So I always call it a process more than like a project because you don't just sit there and do your project real quick. It's a process. You do step one and then you work on them sometimes fast, depending on what you have, like what kind of tools you have, but you shouldn't be surprised if it takes a while to complete the project just because of the drying time. Okay, so we're outlining the middle segment of the pencil. When I start piping, I always like to find a, a junction, like a place that would naturally be sort of a corner. And I'm actually using the yellow icing to go around the lines I created. Let's see if we can not have my head in there. And then just kind of close it up. And again, we'll have to let that dry for um, just a little bit to make sure that it um, sets up and we don't overflow. But while it's drying, I was gonna show you another feature of the shape shifters. Okay, so the shape shifters come here I got it, with these um, decorating instruction cards and it goes through every step of the process so that you can kind of see how it works. So the first step is to draw the lines. The second step is to outline and flood the sections. So not only do you have a visual, um, it, um, it kind of keeps you in track so you feel like you have a guide. And another cool thing about this is that they're also color coded. So if you're looking for the page, it's going to be blue like the cutter. So if you have a dark blue cutter, it's gonna be a bl dark blue tab. And if you have a turquoise cutter, it'll be turquoise. But anyway, we've got step-by-step -step instructions in here and it shows both at least two ideas for you. I can get the glare off, there we go. Okay, so onto the flooding. Normally whenever I work on cookies, um, 
I kind of like if I have a dozen pencil cookies, I go through each step. And then by the time that I'm finished with that, all 12 of them, it's time to move on to the next one. But if you want to speed up the process, a lot of people use oscillating fans to dry the cookies um, in between. And that really speeds things up so you can move on to the next step. And food dehydrators are also good. I don't have one of those, but just to make the drying time faster. Okay, so I did what I did with the pencil and I filled the yellow outline in with blood icing and I'm gently using my spatula to kind of spread it around. The reason why I, let, I like to let the outlines dry a little bit longer besides the fact that you don't want the overflow in case it plug, if it busts your dam. Um, if you do happen to knock the outline whenever you're moving things around with the spatula and it's dry, it's usually sturdy enough to withstand unsteady hands. Okay, we're going to fast forward. This part would need to dry probably at least three to four hours. If you live in a wet climate, it takes longer. If you live in a dry climate, it, it's a lot shorter. I can probably move on in an hour or two, but um, you do need to wait some time because if you put the colors right next to each other immediately, you'll often have bleed from one color into another. So we are going to magically fast forward here and this is a cookie with, that I've already marked and that this middle section is already dried. And I'm going to add the little um, wooden part and the silver part of the pencil. And as I talk, um, I'll try to talk you through what I'm doing as I work, but also like give you ideas of what you can work with just to kind of inspire. Um, the reason that I started with this middle section is because um, I, if I, if you start at the top, then you have to pipe an outline, wait a couple of hours, do this step. Pipe an outline, wait a couple of hours, do this step. If you start in the middle, you can do the next steps at the same time. So I split the process in the middle, if that make does that make sense? But I split the process in the middle, so... Okay, perfect. Okay. So see, I outlined that little section. Whoops, wrong one. And now we're going to do the little gray section. Does anybody have any questions about the pencil cookies while I'm working on it that they might need answered? Um, one second, we do have a couple of questions, I think. Um, uh, do these cards, the ones that you showed, come in the 80 pack? No. Um, no, but um, the 80 pack does have an idea sheet it didn't make it into the package, but there's going to be available downloads on the American Crafts website as well as mine so that people can get the ideas that were included with them. So you're not without ideas. This is the instructions are specifically for the shapeshifters. Okay, I'm going to start at another corner and this is gray icing. If you wanted to get really fancy, you could use um, like shimmer dusts luster di type dust that are also in Michael's to fill that in or to paint over it and make it shiny. You just need like a little bit of something that's heavily alcohol based like vanilla extract, lemon extract, or um, a lot of times um, I'll use vodka or Everclear and you just mix the powder in and paint it, make it shiny. Um, but that's a cool little technique that you can use to make it fun. 
Why not do, okay, I'm looking at a question real quick. Why not do the yellow, black, and red all in the first step? Um, you could do it that way. It's totally up to you. It's personal preference. And that's another thing I probably should have started with. Um, I'm going to talk while I show you the flooding of these sections. Um, there is no right or wrong way to decorate a, a cookie. It's really royal icing is a medium. And you can play with your medium and figure out how it works best for you. So um, as I'm teaching today, I'm actually teaching the technique of outlining and flooding. There are a lot of cookie decorators as they get more experienced and, and decorate a lot or they have businesses that they'll um, use a single consistency for all this, which is great. It's a time saver, but um, it's really difficult in some ways for beginners to learn. So I always start with the outlining and flooding and then I do something, then I move up to the single consistencies. And I also saw a question pop up about buttercream. Um, these sets work well for buttercream. They translate, it's kind of the same thing. It's buttercream works differently than royal icing, but it is a lot faster. So you can still use the templates to draw the design on the cookie, except fill in the lines with buttercream versus royal icing. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so now we've flooded the gray part and the, um, I'm calling that kind of an ivory tan, but if we're being really specific, it's kind of a flesh tone. So if, it, if you want to make the pencil wood color, use a lighter flesh tone for that. But that's the next step. And then we'll finish up by adding the eraser and the tip of the pencil. Okay, so I'm gonna have, use, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, I was gonna say, uh, while you do that, we have a couple of questions, but you can go ahead and start Perfect. and then I'll ask questions. Okay, I'll let you watch. I'm just going to start here and outline. This is a number two tip. That's what I usually outline with, but I'm ready for questions. Perfect, so would you recommend um, drying them um, out in the open um, in a container or in the refrigerator? Um, absolutely not in the refrigerator or a container because if you um, do that, it'll affect the final texture on the top of the icing. So um, if you put them in the refrigerator, there's a lot of moisture and, and smells and things for it to absorb. That absolutely won't work. They need to be out in the open and they cannot be covered until they completely dry or you'll get splotchiness or crystallization and even pitting and cratering. They need to be in open air. Um, like I said, I use an oscillating fan and that was kind of an accidental technique. Um, where I live in Texas, we have mosquitoes and sometimes a fly will get in the house. And I was actually baking for people and my worst fear was something landing on my cookies. It, it just stressed me out. And so I realized that a fly won't land on the food with an oscillating fan blowing on it. And so I put the fan to keep any bugs or mosquitoes, anything from touching it that I didn't want to. And then I noticed if I dried it with the fan that the the finish was really shiny and pretty, kind of like the ones we have here. But if I didn't, it was a lot more porous and matte. And it also um, it also bled a lot worse, like the color bleed. So ever since then, I've always used a fan. Um, whenever I first started decorating cookies, there weren't wasn't a lot of information online about decorating cookies. So we kind of had to make it up as we go went. And I put a post on my blog about the fan. And then pretty soon people are like dehydrators work too. So if you happen to have a food dehydrator that works as well. And same concept, it'll get the warm, dry air flowing through your cookies and give you a nice finish. It'll keep anything you don't want to land on your cookies off. Um, I say the only thing about the dehydrator is it's a little bit more restrictive with space. It's a little bit more expensive because of um, it's a piece of specialty equipment. And um, it, it, it's just, that's mostly the expense. And the other thing that I was thinking is um, humidity is actually the enemy of cookies with royal icing. And so dehydrators are really good in more humid environments because it kind of takes the moisture away. So like I live in Texas 
in West Texas and we don't have that problem there. Like I don't have a lot of humidity and here in Utah where I'm at now, it's, it's pretty dry. But if you live in a really humid area, you might really, really benefit from using a dehydrator. But again, it just depends on how serious you want to be. I don't like to tell people to buy tons of equipment or things like that because I still want them to have the same results with stuff they probably have. Okay, um, I just did the pencil tip with black icing and you might have noticed I didn't outline and I can do it again just to show you. This is one of the one consistency icings and I'll demo that real quick. I didn't realize that there wasn't a pencil tip on my template whenever I drew it, but um, you don't actually have to have the templates either. So I'm glad that we're talking about this too. Suppose your template doesn't have the little tip notched out. You can either cut it out on your template and do it yourself, or you can just get wild and draw it with your own food color marker. And then, um, you still have a guideline. So you don't have to have templates or you can use paper templates. But um, this is the one consistency icing. I just wanted to show you all as I piped where you could see. See, it's a little thicker and this is way quicker than uh, piping and flood icing because you don't have to make the two consistencies and things like that. But it's also easy to get wrong if you're not experienced. And a lot of times you'll get an avalanche flooding off the side of your cookie. So um, I want people to be aware of this type of icing, but I also want them to start with something that won't frustrate them out of the gate. But, okay. Now let's finish up these pencil, this pencil and I'm going to use the template again and I may have to like take some steps in between to show y'all what I'm doing. Um, you can use a food color marker and the template to mark the designs back on top of the cookie. But the one I have here is black and that one that makes me kind of nervous to put black on this icing. Ta -da, whoops, let's do this. And so um, if you don't have like maybe a yellow or something similar in color, another tip that you can use is to use a needle tool. And we just brought this in a three piece pack to Michael's and you can actually kind of etch into the icing with this needle tool. And I'll, I don't know how visible it's gonna be, but I'm going to try to show you. So suppose you don't know where you wanna put the lines on here you can use this little needle tool and the template to kind of etch. And after I etch the lines on there, I'll hold it up to see if we can see it with our camera. Sometimes it's hard to see. Let's see if, can we see it at all? Oh, I get a little bit of it right there. So if you don't want to use marker, you can also etch like that. Can y'all see? Uh, there we go. But in this case, that's what I'm going to do. And to finish it out, like this is just piping icing on top and you can use a one or two tip. I'm going to pipe on this little detail. And we'll do the little like lines from the pencil. And this one, I'm just kind of winging. The instruction card has the picture. So if you need guidance or if you don't like how this looks and want to go it a different way, do that too. And remember, we pull up and away. And also, um, whenever I finished the cookie, I kind of started looking at it and I was like, oh, it needs a little bit more squiggle. And so feel free to do that yourself. I ended up adding just a little, like kind of squiggle to finish it out. It just felt right. And that's another way I tell people to decorate cookies. Like, you don't have to do it exactly like I do. I'm just giving you the basic tools and knowledge so that you can do it on your own. And here, I'm gonna hold this one up. This is the final product. Ta -da. 
Okay. The last cookie, how are we on time real quick? Okay, we've got 15 minutes. The last cookie that um, I'm going to decorate is actually an apple. And this really is probably the first cookie that I decorated. It is from the um, 80 piece set. Well, here we go, let me do this. It's from that new 80 piece set, which is really exciting. The 80 piece set cookie cutters don't necessarily um, make two things, but it's not very often that I design a cutter that doesn't do too many things. So, uh, so most of these do double up. But anyway, we're going to do this apple and I'm going to get right to it. Um, this is a, I'm gonna show it to you, Jordan. Um, this is a template that I usually include on my website. And this one is included in the links here if you need them. Um, Anyway, a lot of times if we don't actually put a plastic template like these in the box, I still make these on my own for people to have as a guide. And you don't even necessarily need them. Some people are really comfortable just winging it, but I always like to have them as a guide for people who aren't. And the way that these work is that you, you get them off of my blog and print them out. Let me turn things around so they make sense here. And there's two different sides. I should have showed you before I cut it out. There's a side that's a traceable template that we can use for this. Or there's a side if you happen to have a projector. Some people use projectors to decorate cookies. You can either project this straight from my um, website or you can put it in a copy cake type projector if you have those. So um, we've got both in there. And I also have the pencil, which we use as well like um, this one came with a template, but a lot of times if you happen to lose this, which I actually managed to do on the way to Utah, um, I can provide backups for people so that you can still either project them or cut out your own template at home. A little tip for that is I normally use cardstock to do this and then your template is good until the end of time, unless you decorate a lot of cookies. But if you print it out on cardstock and cut it out, then you can use it over and over again. A lot of people ask me about cookie cutter storage and I'm, I'm just kind of chatting while I'm cutting this out. Um, there's something else at Michael's that I use a lot. Um, if you look at the dollar bin near the register, they often have little like storage containers, especially now for flashcards. And once I um, cut these out, I will put a flashcard container with these templates that I've already used in the drawer with the cutter set they belong with. That way they're always in the same drawer as the cutters whenever I need them. Okay, so we got this cut out. It works the same as the um, pencil template. It's just made of paper instead. And I'm going to use a black food color marker to kind of This one's seen better days. I've used this one a lot. To trace the line on there, just to give me something to follow. It doesn't have to be perfect. And if you're, if you're worried, you could also use the red because it's the same color as the icing. But once I get the design traced on there, we're going to use a number two tip again to um, outline the apple portion of the cookie. And remember how I told you all that I like to start at a junction or a corner? Um, this cutter doesn't actually have like a sharp edge or anything. So I'm starting right about here and it, it seems kind of silly, but I actually chose to start right there because on the final cookie, the piped leaf will cover it up. But see, we're pulling up and away from the cookie and I'm just a little bit ahead. I'm following the curve. A lot of the cookie videos you watch online are sped up a lot because it's, it's fun, but it's slow going. And then anyway, I pipe around and whenever I get to the connection point, I kind of drag it in and then that way you don't get that point 
it's okay if you do, but it's not there. That's just kind of like an extra skill. So we've got the apple cookie. We've got the outline. We're going to let it um, dry again, just so that we have a little bit of time for questions at the end. I'm gonna kind of go for it since I have another one here and flood it before time. Um, if it actually does run over because I didn't let the outline set up long enough, that'll work out because it'll be a good demonstration of why. Again, usually you're working on cookies assembly line style. So ideally, by the time you get to the last apple cookie, the first outline will be dry enough to work on. But if it's not, just give it a minute. You can get up and get some water, fold some laundry if you're really determined like that. <laughs> I'll probably sit on the couch or play on my phone, but See, we filled it in and we left a little bit of those holes so it doesn't completely overflow because we can come back and add more later. And then I'll use the offset spatula to kind of um, spread it out. And see, like I'm looking at it and I feel like it, um, it can handle a little bit more icing as it flows because it's not um, flush. And see, you can add more here. So. It's better to err on the side of caution when you're flooding and go light first and then add more if you need it. And another thing, I don't know if y'all caught that, but I like the offset spatula. It is not for everybody. It's something I can't work without, but some people are like, They're, they bother me. But that's how I get a lot of the bubbles out. So I hope y'all can see this if you can't. I've got an air bubble right here. And as I use the spatula, it kind of just pops the air bubbles. I can see them kind of just smoothing out. So once we get this outline and flooded, um, also this um, little pick tool that I have, um, this is good for popping air bubbles. And I wanted to make sure that's a question I get a lot, like how do you prevent air bubbles? Um, there's a very long answer to that, but Primarily, um, my offset spatula helps and having a little needle tool like this one in the Michaels kit really helps to eliminate air bubbles. So we've got the apple outlined and flooded. And then we're gonna magically speed it up. And then we're going to do the last two steps here. Um, the first step is a stem and I'm actually using a larger tip for this one. It's going to be a number three tip just because I want it to be bulkier and show more. And we're going to do this kind of like a, what they call the, a teardrop and I'll show you here before I start. So I'm, let me give Jordan a minute to move things around. Um, I basically make a dot of icing and I'm still pushing, but I'm also dragging through. So make a dot, still adding pressure to the bag and pull it down. And that makes a nice little stem shape. Does that show pretty well? Sort of, I'll do it on the, I'll also do it on the cookie where you can see, but you're making just like a heavy pressure squeeze dot and then you're kind of dragging through and you still maintain a little bit of pressure as you drag through and it makes a teardrop shape. And we can go over some of these if we need to after the fact. So I, I like this little cookie turntable because it lets um, me move a cookie into the most comfortable position for this. But see, I just start with a little dot and I drag it right down through. And that's another thing that um, the little needle tool is really good for. I've got a little point right there that I don't necessarily want there. I can fix that or I can move the icing around just a little bit to get it how I want it to be. So this uh, needle tool is really good for like fine tuning things. But you add the stem. And this is kind of the part that scares people, but we're gonna go for it. The very last detail is using a leaf tip, which is a number 67 in most cases to add a leaf. And um, there's other variations of the leaf tips. If anybody has a question, I 
think it's a 252, but I don't know. So I'm not going to promise you, but I'll figure out like, I'm looking at y'all, but I'm actually looking here. Um, I'll figure it out after the fact and give you the the real answer. There's another type of leaf tip that works for people who aren't super comfortable. Um, I'm going to practice again on this plate. We'll see if we can get a good angle on here. See how it works. But the way you use a leaf tip is um, it's kind of got a slit in the front and you hold it flat and you squeeze the little dot out and pull at the same time and it should make a leaf. So squeeze, pull, release. Squeeze, pull, release. Sometimes you need to adjust these. Like if you're getting it where it's broken a little bit in the tip, you can use a small knife to open it up if you need to. Like use a knife right here and kind of give it some wiggle room. But um, that's a little bit more in depth. There's a lot of great tutorials on using leaf tips if you need to. But for now, I'm just going to go for it. So I'll start right here and squeeze, pull, and release. And you've got a leaf. See, and mine split a little bit, so I'm actually using the tip to pull it to a point. And I will show you the final cookie. I'm gonna show you all this one, because it's dry. There we go. So we've got just the flooded apple, the stem with a number three tip and a number 67 leaf. Um, more considerations for this too. These are also super fun if you add a worm or you can use a scallop circle cutter or a sugar belt edger, which is an older product. If you happen to have that to take a little bite out of the apple and add a little bit of yellow, um, you can make them in multiple colors. I made pink ones last year because I saw some really pretty stickers at Michael's that I liked. Or you could put like a little glare in there. And even another idea one of my cookie friends, uh, Mont Montreal Confections had was to use a circle cutter to cut out a little hole in the apple and feed a gummy worm through it. So if you didn't think kids could like cookies more, put a gummy worm in there and see how it goes. But that's the apple. That's about all that I have for you today. Um, I'm really glad that everybody came to the class. Um, I did want to give everybody um, a, a chance to ask questions that they might have. And I do see some that I already knew that might get asked. But um, let me see if I have any questions that anybody might need answered while y'all are here. Yes, I have a couple of them saved up for you. Okay. Um, so okay. Kevin would like to know a true royal, uh, red royal icing that's hard to achieve sometimes. What color brand do you use and how long do you leave it to develop? Okay. Yeah. And you already actually understand a lot of the basics that um, help out. The development part is important. Um, in the beginning, I only used a brand called AmeriColor. But now, um, in the last 10 years, they have so many colors on the market now that are good colors that I'm not as selective as I used to be. So um, really, whenever I pick a food color, I'm not as particular about brand. But when it comes to reds, I use a no taste red. And in some brands, they call them tulip reds. And some um, Wilton actually has one called no taste red. And it's a pretty deep, substantial red. Um, Michael's has it. I saw it in like a 12 piece kit in a pot. That one works. Um, so I I'll use almost any brand. I just try to lean toward the no taste. Um, my biggest tip is the development. Like you said, if you walk away, then it um, helps a lot. Um, something that I get about the no taste red is some people say to them it looks orange. And it really is like an orangey or red. But if you look through my cookies, that's about all I use. And people don't seem to notice that. I think I think if you're looking at it or if you're looking at it side by side with maybe another red, then it looks really orange. But if you don't, if you're not looking right at it, it's not as like in your face, I guess, for lack of a better word. But um, if you, the development, if you start the day before, that's best because you'll really get that rich red. But the development time is really important, almost probably more so than the brand. But not a super stickler brand. The Wilton pots are good. Um, they're a little bit inconvenient because they don't drop, but you're not gonna get a super bad food color most of the time. 
Awesome. We have another question by Linda. Um, how do you store your leftover icing? Um, I actually just usually leave them in these bottles with the tops on. Or if you need your tips, like if you don't have a million tips like I do, I'll put a little piece of press and seal over the top and screw it back on. So you can actually store them directly in the bottle with the plastic, or you can put them in little like snack size Ziploc baggies, can keep it on the counter. I don't usually refrigerate it and that's a long scientific answer, but um, a lot of times whenever you have a whole lot of sugar in something like royal icing, it actually prevents microbial growth. And in one of my blog posts that I linked for the class, I actually have a really good article on that. But um, anyway, it does freeze well too. So you can put it in press and seal baggies or in Ziploc baggies. You can make little press and seal pods or you can dump everything in one bag, keep it in your freezer and use it to make black icing next time. Like mix all the colors and it'll turn an ugly color brown and then add black color on top of it. But generally in my house, you're gonna find it on the counter in one of these bottles. Awesome. Um, we have this question from several people actually. When would be the perfect time to start an order to make sure that they're fresh between you know, the drying and the decorating time? Okay, um, as a baker, I always like started my baker, my baking on Sunday and Monday because typically pickup is on Friday. So I would say about four days ahead of time. The good thing about baking is you can really get ahead with that because cookies freeze well. So if you're a little bit overwhelmed, you can do all your baking at one time on the same day and keep them in airtight containers and just allow yourself like, um, I hope this makes sense. Um, I would do all my baking on Sunday and Monday, and then I would pick the order that was coming up first. And the first order that was going to go out the door, I would do on Monday. And then the second order would be Tuesday and Wednesday. And then I would space it out that way so that the, I decorate the order that's going out first. Um, as it would go out the door pretty soon after it was decorated. But um, that's kind of the cool thing about cookies too. They have a really good shelf life. That's why you have a whole grocery store aisle of cookies like in the packaging they are in. Um, they really last a long time. So if you get nervous about it, um, another tip that I have is go ahead and make your orders and make one extra cookie for yourself, package it in a cellophane bag and mark the date on it and then come back and taste it and see like three weeks from now, would I eat this cookie and it's still good? You might be surprised or, oh, that's horrible. I'll never wait three weeks. So it's, you experiment a lot. Perfect. Um, one other thing about that, um, people do also print out like baking worksheets. I don't have one because it's it's pretty personal to me, but if you look online, some people have worksheets on exactly how to organize it. And especially Flower Box Bakery and the Barefoot Baker, they have really good print printable workout sheets to help you keep the timing sorted out. Okay, um, so how far in advance can you bag the colored royal icing um, so that it doesn't separate? Um, I do it like pretty like that day and I don't even like to let it wait all day. And I actually, um, I brought something in here just in case somebody asked a question about air bubbles. Um, I always mix in measuring cups like this. I'm going to get a closer angle because a, I can see how much I'm making. So I know how much I need to put in the bag and then how much I'll have left over to put in a bottle. But um, also I can mix the color and, sorry Jordan, and not thin it, just leave it at the thicker piping consistency, cover it up and that way I'm mixing ahead of time, but I don't have to actually thin it until right when I'm ready to use it. Because if you color and then do the thinning, you're gonna be there for two hours. If you color it ahead of time, let it rest, develop, then come back and do this real quick, it's a lot quicker but I wouldn't recommend doing any of the consistencies until pretty quick before you're starting to use them because like some of mine, like the gray is separating already and I did it like the hour before this. So you can already see where it's separating. And um, also have, I don't know if I brought one of those in with me. Um, they are in Michael's stores. I have a bottle spatula. So if you put them in the bottle and this starts to happen, it's an extra, extra long spatula that you can put in there. It's narrow and you can stir it up in the bottle. That way, if you do get that, that's the solution for it. 
because you can always knead, but it doesn't do quite the same as the spatula. So an hour, but we have, we have solutions for that if you need them. Okay, and how long does the icing last? The icing can last indefinitely. Um, I always joke, I'm like one of those pizzerias from New York that have had the same piece of dough from the beginning as their starter. Um, I use old colors to make new colors. And so, um, I mean, it essentially lasts forever, but every once in a while I'll get tired of it and start over a new batch, but it lasts a long time. I'd say even three weeks. The only thing you may have to do is if it separates, re-whip it in your mixer to kind of fluff it up again. It's really the separation that's the enemy. The icing doesn't spoil. Okay. Um, so I know you talked about uh, freezing the cookies, but what about the dough? Can that be frozen as well? Um, depends on the dough. I don't like to freeze my dough personally, but I actually included, I don't know, I didn't see if it went through. Um, I included a link to a Pinterest board that I have with about 170 cutout recipes. And that way people can go through and find the dough that works for them. And there are lots and lots of dough recipes that work. It's just not what I like to do with mine. Um, my dough is a little bit more shortbread texture and it doesn't need any waiting or chilling time in between. You can make it in the mixer and go straight to it. But if you want to freeze, there's a lot of recipes that work really well for that. And they're all pinned on my Pinterest board. Perfect. So we have a couple of questions about the, the food coloring for the notebooks um, and about them bleeding. Do you have any um, tips for that? And how long does it take to dry? Um, okay, so if we're talking about bleeding, um, if you're drawing the lines on the cookie, um, I wouldn't go right back over. I don't remember like if I pointed it out while I was working, but I would move down where I didn't overlap the ruler because it will smear but um, it usually dries in about like five minutes, but I always let them sit out longer. I would give it a good hour. And if you're worried about it, you can put a paper towel on top. Let me, I'm just gonna hold it up so we don't have to do that drink. But um, you can put a paper towel on top and just lightly lay it and see if it picks up any of the um, food color. But um, I traveled with these in um, cellophane bags and I cut a little square of parchment to put over them just to prevent that because it does happen. So you might have to be considerate of how you package them. Like it's, and um, another tip trick some people use is to take like a, a food safe brush and dust a little bit of cornstarch over it after it's dried a while, maybe a couple of hours. And a lot of times that'll set it just like setting powder for your face, like makeup setting powder. It, it works for food color markers too. But a lot of these things, um, I don't actually have like all the answers or the mysteries to life. A lot of times um, whenever I plan things, um, you get experienced and you plan around it. And there's a lot of help out there on the internet too. So if you do get into something and you're like, oh no, what's happening? Um, if you reach out to me on Instagram, a lot of times I'll just help you. So if y'all have any questions, like I'm always, I'm a, I'm a good helper. Perfect. Um, we have another, uh, this is an easy question. What is the name of the cookie cutter set for the shapes again? Um, okay, we have three different ones. I brought them in here where I could show y'all. Okay, this is the big 80 piece set. And um, let's do this. Okay, this is the 80 piece set and we can get the item number so you have it. This is called the assorted cookie cutter me mega set. So this is the one with the apple in it. Um, the one that I think they're asking about is the shapeshifters and Michaels has those. I'm assuming they're asking about this one, right? Here we go. I'm not making this easy for the camera guy. <laughs> He's the most patient person in the world. Um, this is Shapeshifters 1. Some people might already have this in, a, in the larger, like the original set. This is the updated Shapeshifters 1. Um, you can kind of see in the camera, we just updated some of the designs. So like the Paisley is a little bit curlier. We changed the boy and girl. You can kind of see them right here. I'm doing this. I'm not that coordinated. Okay, so 
we changed the boy and the girl. But um, most significantly, um, the sizes are smaller. And I do plan on jumping on like some sort of live next week to show you all the difference in the old ones and the new ones size wise. Awesome. Um, huh. Sunita would like to know if you're if you will be releasing any Halloween and Christmas cookie. Cards. Um, that's honestly, I want to I always have ideas. That's honestly up to Michael's. If they want them there, we'll get them there. So if I would love to, um, I don't, I see one about tipless bags. I don't ever use them because I'm a creature of habit and I just like the way I do things. I'm pretty settled in my medium, but they're really great. Like they're, they're time saver, mess saver, a little bit of, um, learning curve. The biggest reason I don't use them is because I like icing tips. So I hope that helped everybody. Are we pretty good with I, questions? I with, um, yeah. I think we're good with questions. Okay, well, I really enjoyed everybody. Thank you for being patient. I, I had this planned and planned, but I always get a little bit nervous. So I don't know if I'm scatterbrained, but um, like I said, I'm available to help. That's what my social media is for. Um, Facebook, I'm not there a whole lot, but um, my, my social media friend Emily is and Instagram, I'm usually right there. So if I post something and you have a question, I try really hard to answer things. Perfect. But I'm glad everybody, it was good to see everybody. Thanks for listening to me talk for an hour. I see y'all's faces. I can't hear anybody, but hi, everyone. everyone and bye. They loved it. Um, they found your class to be super helpful. So it was a great um, first class. Thank you so much Bob, awesome. for being here with us. And and thank y'all. Um, last takeaway before we leave, and I'll I'm a talker. Um, they're really, that's what I want you to remember. There is no right or wrong way to do things. So if you see something and you don't like the way I did it, don't feel like you have to just have fun with it. Like that's the point. It's supposed to be fun and it's supposed to be a cool gift for you or the people that, that you want to give cookies to. That's a great tip. Thank you I see. so much. And thanks thank you for us today. We'll see you on another Michael's class and hopefully you'll be back soon, Kelly. Okay, we're working on it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.